Good evening. Welcome to the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show. It's live here on BLS. Bob Long, Rob Stott. And what an atmosphere we have for you tonight. As we turn your attention towards the field in just a second, we will see the 2016 Philadelphia Soul as they raise their championship banner here at their home, the Wells Fargo Center. Again, I'm Bob Long, and Rob Stott behind the camera right now will join me in just a few minutes. But the Philadelphia Soul, led by Dan Rodeball at quarterback and by Clint Dolzell as the head coach, won their second Arena Bowl championship in nine years as they won in 2009 and won in 2016. Now return as the league favorites once again in 2017. Now we'll turn you to the field as we have some special guests being introduced. Some of the keys in the Philadelphia Soul organization and related to football in this city. And you can see as well, as we zoom in now, the banner just above the heads of these gentlemen walking onto the field right now. That's the banner that will be raised toward the ceiling for all time here at the Wells Fargo Center as the Soul have earned another championship of Arena Bowl. Jari Evans now being introduced, part owner of the Soul. And as you heard Vinny, the PA announcer, mention, member of the Green Bay Packers. The ownership team of this Philadelphia Soul organization, very strong and very key to their success. And soon to be introduced, of course, Ron Jaworski, the man that brought the NFL draft here to Philadelphia and the man that brought this team to Philadelphia. We'll get Rob in on this now, Rob. Ron Jaworski and his impact on this city. Well, first of all, Bob, Ron Jaworski fresh off announcing some NFL draft picks uh, down on, on Broad, well, not on Broad Street, on the Ben Franklin Parkway, part of the NFL draft this weekend here in Philadelphia. But uh, an incredible person, Ron Jaworski, not only just for his impact with, you know, being number seven in your programs, for so many years, but also with the Philadelphia Soul and just being a, a staple in this community here in Philadelphia. And of course, it's great that he could make time to come out here in the middle of a busy schedule for him as he was the sort of un unofficial host, Rob, of the NFL Draft. And we'll have some pictures from the NFL Draft that we'll put into this show here today and discuss a little bit of that impact on football in Philadelphia. What a beautiful scene here this evening as we prepare for kickoff. But first, this celebration and this ceremony honoring the 2016 Arena Bowl champions. Now the rings beginning to be disseminated. First, the members of the team no longer, but team the guys that played on this team last year and were part of a road to the championship. Line, Neil Tivis being introduced. Rob, he was such a key on that offensive line last year. Really made things easy for Rodeball and gave his receivers time to get open. Yeah, we saw that not even with Rodeball, but also another member of the, the team that's no longer with them, uh, Jeremy Richardson, running back, uh, yes. opening up holes and, you know, never, didn't you don't think rushing attack much in the Arena Football League, but the Soul had one with Richardson last year, and uh, Tibbeth was a big part of that. And speak of the devil. There he is. You heard Tommy Frevert be introduced as well, the Arena League kicker of the year last year. And here he is. Jake Metz being introduced. Member of the Buffalo Bills organization from Souderton High School and Shippensburg University, an undrafted free agent out of college, played his way into the Arena Football League, spent some time in the China Arena League as well. Got a short stint with the Eagles last year on their practice squad, made it through a portion of preseason, and now signed with the Bills. And just to continue that Philadelphia connection, he'll be playing under head coach 
uh, Sean McDermott, who, by the way, is a LaSalle grad going back right. to our, our high school days. And a former Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator that left here and became a wonderful defensive coordinator in Carolina. The engineer of one of the best defenses in the league, which earned him the opportunity. Finally getting his shot. Chris Duvault, number one, the speedster being introduced. And Bo Bell was huge last year, Rob. He'll be a big piece again. Bell, the Mac linebacker, spent a little bit of time hurt last year, but was big down the stretch. Luke Collis, the backup quarterback. And there's Dan Rodeball. One of the key players for any team in this league. Rob, I'll let you take money, Reynolds. Oh, just a tremendous wide receiver with Mets. Uh, you know, had the opportunity to, to try out for the Eagles last season and just a real key uh, making big plays down the field. Uh, sort of that weapon X, if you will, for, for the soul. Uh, just cranking it up and being that reliable target for Dan. You could just throw the ball up there and Darius would go and get it. Sean Kalinamoku, SK as they call him. Ryan McDaniel, Joe Gooseby were also introduced, and Dwayne Hollis. So there's four keys to this team. And again, to remind the viewers what we're looking at here, these are the guys that were on the team last year being given their championship rings. But Rob, this almost feels like they're just going through the starting lineup for this team. And that's the key for this Soul team this year, is that they have so many keys coming back. Really all the end pieces and the key pivots for this team are back and are in very strong glaring roles for this team. Yeah, in a, in a league that doesn't, you know, continuity isn't at the top of their vocabulary. This is a team that has a lot of continuity and that's huge for the Philadelphia Soul as they look uh, to, to head down this road to repeating, it seems like as they're called the theme for this year. Uh, so just, and not, it, it's not even continuity in the sense that a lot of the names would say it, it's big names that are still here and that's that's huge for the Philadelphia Soul. Right, and really from a skill position perspective, everybody's back. The only guy, you wouldn't call it a skill position because it's on the defensive side, but the only guy really not back on the defensive end, well of course Jake Metz from the defensive end perspective, but in the defensive backfield, Tracy Belton now playing for the Washington Valor and actually took back an interception of Dan Rodeball last week that gave the Valor a then 14 nothing lead that the Soul had to eclipse, and they did so with a 21-0 run and a scoreless defensive half against Washington to win the game. That's just how the Arena Football League goes. <laughs> not much. I haven't, <laughs> seen many, I haven't seen many no. games like that. <laughs> no, not at all. And a much-deserved round of applause celebrating the championship and the ring ceremony for last year's champions. Giving that banner one last touch before it goes up into the rafters here at the Wells Fargo Center. That's the beautiful thing. And as we see this banner go up, we'll see some of the other great banners. Lastly, 
I need to thank my wife, or I have no place to go back to tonight after the game, for designing these amazing, beautiful championship rings. A thank you to Barbara Spencer. Egypt, thank you very much for being here. Fans, you've been great. It's our 12th season. We can't thank you enough. Great, thank you very much. Philadelphia Soul fans, thank you so much for your amazing support of our World Championship team. This week has been a celebration of football here in Philadelphia, the most passionate football city in America. Tonight, we celebrate a World Championship. This banner signifies incredible excellence from ownership to coaches to players, the front office, the locker room attendants, our trainers, the cheerleaders, the soul, our one team with you fans. Our one goal is to bring another world championship back to Philadelphia. It gives me tremendous pride in our community to raise this world championship banner that will hang from this ceiling in perpetuity, saying thank you to the great fans of the Philadelphia Soul. On behalf of this great team, raise the banner! Certainly that moment of winning a championship may be the apex for an athlete, but this not far behind. Having the opportunity to raise a banner in front of your own eyes, something that you work so hard for, for yourself, for your teammates, personal goals, city goals, team goals. And with a bunch of brothers that you'll have for the rest of your lives. The banner takes its rightful place at the top of the Wells Fargo Center, home of the Philadelphia Soul. That concludes the pregame ceremony that we were happy to bring with you and bring to you here on Bob Long Sports Video. We'll now take our break and come back on the other side as we'll get into the Philadelphia Soul preview for the season, as well as some of the differences you'll see in this Arena Football League this year. Bob Long from Bob Long Sports here, and I want to urge all our listeners to visit our friends at Dunphy Ford in the Northeast. Dunphy Ford has all the latest Ford models, trucks, SUVs, and sedans. They also have a wide selection of used cars, trucks, and SUVs as well. Owned by a LaSalle graduate and a proud sponsor of Explorers Basketball, Dunphy Ford should be your first stop to buy or lease a new car. Visit them at 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in the Northeast or at DunphyFord.com. Check out the team of attorneys at Howland Hess O'Connell for all your estate planning needs. Located at 2444 Huntington Pike in Huntington Valley, Howland Hess O'Connell specializes in the drafting of wills, powers of attorney, and living wills. Partner Michael Cassidy, a LaSalle High School graduate and father of Michael Cassidy Jr., class of 2009, is a proud alumnus and former quarterback for your LaSalle Explorers. Call today at 215-287. 9292 or CUP Wawa. L Mark Signs and Graphics, your choice for custom signs and design, has been servicing the Philadelphia area for over 30 years. From illuminated signs to vehicle wraps, L Mark Signs is your choice for all your custom signs needs. L Mark delivers high quality signs with a courteous, helpful, and experienced staff. Visit them at lmarksigns.com or give them a call at 610-692-0525. Again, that's lmarksigns.com, 610-692-0525. 
610-692-0525. Go check out their website for some great examples of signs that Elmark has created. And be sure to tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. ElmarkSigns.com, your choice for custom signs and design. Once again, this is the Philadelphia Soul pregame show. It's live on BLS Video. And Rob, great to have you back, my friend. It's been far too long. And uh, this is a championship team coming back to their home venue. A lot of great things to talk about. But first of all, can't go much further without talking about the champions. Oh, it's awesome. It, it, what a season it was last year. You know, thank you for having me, Bob. Happy to be back. Uh, just an, an incredible experience to watch them raise that banner here behind us. And uh, just it's the Philadelphia. So, you know, it's you, you don't get to see this much in Philadelphia, a championship team. So <laughs> it's nice when it happens, even if it, you know, it, it's our beloved Philadelphia soul. So got to be happy. Yeah, and now this league in and of itself, you'll see a lot of changes this year. The The product behind us won't change too, too much. The field dimensions remain the same, 50 yards in the field of play, followed by nine-yard end zones on each side, so a 68-yard field, the width of a hockey arena. But what you'll see is a lot of different teams, Rob. In the offseason, we had departures of two teams out of Florida, the Orlando Predators and the Jacksonville Sharks. The Sharks, which gave the soul a very big challenge in the playoffs. And then out west, the Portland Steel and the LA Kiss no longer with the league. After those departures, the Arizona Rattlers all of a sudden, Rob, in a league of now six teams, found themselves as the only team within 2,000 miles of the nearest team. And so they had to make a decision of their own. They joined another league out west. So that left three teams, we mentioned the six, two new coming teams that we knew about, yep. the Washington Valor, Valor and the Baltimore Brigade, who are here tonight. So with those six teams, Arizona decided they're going to go elsewhere. And so now we have a team of five, or I should say a league of five teams, and it'll be a little bit different. Each team will have three buys now, and every week one team will have a buy. And obviously now this league focused on the East Coast. It'll have a different look, a different feel, but very much the same product. Yeah, and it, it's you know it goes back to speaking last year with uh, Commissioner Scott Butera telling us you know, he was very much looking for owners that wanted to be a part of this league. Uh, did, numbers didn't matter to him, you know, as he told us. So uh, to, to go from a team that might have had eight, te eight teams in it, or go from a league that had eight teams in it to, right. to five, you know, that's not a big deal to him. He's just looking for five of the best owners uh, or five of the best franchises. And, and you know, he might have found it here. He brought in Ted Leonsis, an incredible sports owner that we know, you know, owns three teams already in Washington, uh, the Caps, uh, Wizards and the Mystics of the WNBA, and yes. now now you bring in two AFL teams for uh, for Ted, and you know why not? You know helping support this league that that's trying to get itself, uh, you know, after two years of contraction now, get it right. get it, you know, going in the right direction, and you bring in a guy like that, nothing wrong with that. I think that's important to mention that Ted Leonsis did do something that helped this league, a league with four teams versus a league with five. You know whether that would be a challenge. Uh, it's it's very tough to say whether that would be the straw that made the camel's back uh, camel drop. But what I think is important is identifying those owners that are really the most financially committed in the cities that are most committed as well. So once you get that, then you can start to grow yep. and build upward. And so that's where the league is right now. We mentioned a little bit during the pregame show and during the ceremony honoring the champions, the weapons that are back for this sole team, Rob. Dan Rodeball, the quarterback, the 2015 AFL MVP, as well as a guy that just absolutely cleaned up last year. Over 100 touchdowns thrown Woo! over the course of the regular season, plus the playoffs. Over 4,000 yards passing. And all of a sudden, you return him in rare form with his top three receivers and half of the offensive line back. This could be a good year for Dan Rodeball and the Philadelphia Soul. Absolutely. And you talk about, you know, football, you always talk about quarterback being the most important position. And not only are you returning your quarterback, you're returning your three biggest weapons at uh, wide receiver. So this this team, this core right here, you look around the AFL uh, and the lack of continuity, continuity exists right here. And that's important for this team and sets them up for what should be a tremendous 2017. Absolutely. We're happy to be back here once again. Bob Long, Rob Stott here on the BLS Philadelphia Soul pregame show. Now, we mentioned the departures. Jake Metz, 
Tracy Belton, gone for various reasons. Tracy Belton joined the Washington Valor, returned a Dan Rodeball <laughs> interception to the house to put them up two touchdowns. That's uh, a, a welcome back, if you will. feel good for him. Uh, for the Philadelphia Soul as they travel to Washington for that game. Jake Metz travels up to Buffalo as a member of the Buffalo Bills organization. The Souderton High School grad now joins the LaSalle High School coach up in Buffalo. And uh, for a guy that was an undrafted free agent out of Shippensburg, made his way across the indoor football leagues and had a really great stint here with Philadelphia, it couldn't be a better story. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to see just those two Philly products wind up together up in Buffalo. Sad to see him leave the soul with such an integral part of that team last year. Uh, but, you know, got to be happy for him. That's what this league's all about, you know. I mean, you got guys in, and you kind of want to help them along the way. You, obviously, you want your league to exist and be successful, and it's doing its thing right now. But to see a guy like that come through and, and make it to the next level, you got to feel good for him. And obviously, the local connection, it's just an awesome story all around. Exactly right. Now we are about to have kickoff. The 1-1 one one Baltimore Brigade travel to Philadelphia, their third road game in a row, to take on the Soul in the home opener. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Philadelphia Soul official pregame show. And if you want to listen on radio, you can go to our colleagues at 97.5 The Fanatic. For Rob Stott, I'm Bob Long saying so long, and we'll see you next time.